what are the lessons from for india from the ukraine war from the ukraine conflict because the conflict began in in, in february 24 february i believe this year 2022 it's almost august yeah five months or so and now we have sufficient information sufficient data to draw some lessons from this conflict right so what are the lessons for india from the ukraine conflict because every nation every major nation is watching this uh, war this conflict very closely and learning and and drawing inferences and lessons from what's happening there so what are the lessons first of all witness how russia has been able to withstand american sanctions why has russia been able to withstand us sanctions and why is russia doing re- remarkably well the economy is doing just fine yeah uh, the ruble is, is the strongest currency most likely in the whole world right now the ruble has appreciated against the us dollar the ruble has gone even even f- further ahead than what it where it was in february right so the reason why the russian economy has not been destroyed on the other hand it's doing well why is it so it's because russia is essentially an autarky what's an autarky a nation that's self sufficient in most major uh, resources agriculture russia has is self sufficient in agriculture in food resources it doesn't need to import food products grains etc from anywhere it produces all the food it needs that's number one secondly russia is has energy self sufficiency russia doesn't need to import oil gas or whatever else from anywhere else russia is able to produce all of that on its own soil on its own territory so russia has energy security it's the energy security is assured thirdly um so that's number one there is energy security and then, then there is uh, agriculture then there are things like russia has a strong industrial base uh, it's one of the major producers of things like cement steel and things like that and these are the real foundations of a nation's gdp if you look at the various gdps of the world you can see china is so far ahead us is so far ahead but a lot of the calculations that go into these these gdp numbers depend on well services and goods that don't really produce anything you know the real measure of a nation's gdp is is agriculture energy uh industrial output uh steel cement all the things essentially the things that went into the calculations of gdp numbers in the 1920s and 1930s that's what really matters if you are self sufficient in those metrics then nobody can destroy your nation or your economy yeah and so that's what's happening russia is doing very well these sanctions have not worked Uh, it's it's russia is essentially untouched and then they have been able to link their they, they have decided to link their currency to gold to the to the uh, price of gold because they have sufficient reserves of gold right so that is also something that's worked in their favor and that's why the russian uh, ruble is doing so well because it essentially is a proxy for actual gold right uh, it, you're guaranteed to get get gold in exchange for rubles if you ask for it so that's the reason why the russians are doing well so that is the economic thing so does india have these uh, these uh, security measures are we self sufficient is india self sufficient in from in the from the terms of from the perspective of uh, food security agriculture i think india imports much i mean not all not a great deal but a significant amount of uh, its uh, food grains etc are imported from other places mainly from maybe from africa from other places so that is something that india should look into food security energy security india needs to india is is dependent on the gulf nations mostly for energy security so in case you are dependent on other nations you need to have strategic reserves that can last for months not weeks yeah it's not enough to have strategic oil reserves that will last you for 3 weeks or 4 weeks you need to have strategic reserves that will last you for 12 months the whole nation you need to build that capacity so that's another lesson india needs to learn and uh, industry is important all these things india needs to look into now when it comes to the military factor these are the economic factors that we that we've discussed what about the military well there are lots of lessons to learn from the war from from the military perspective first of all you need lots and lots of missiles 50 missiles 100 missiles 200 missiles is simply not enough thus far in the past 4 5 6 months 5 months the russians have used up 
more than 3,000, 4,000 cruise missiles. That's a huge number of missiles. And they still have lots more. This is a war that's dragging on. They, they, it is dragging on on purpose. The um, Russians wanted to drag on, right? They could have taken over Ukraine and smashed the flattened the, play, the place in three weeks if they wanted, but they have chosen to fight a certain kind of war. And there must be a good reason for that. And they have they have fi fired more than 3,000 missiles by now, cruise missiles. And not just one kind of missile, multiple types of missiles with different ranges and different uh, purposes, right? India has a one-trick pony, the Brahmos missile. Of course, we have different kinds of Brahmos missiles. Uh, we have a 290-kilometer range, a 700-kilometer range, and allegedly other ranges as well. And we now have different variants of the Brahmos also. You know, the Brahmos NG which may or may not be developed. I don't know what the situation is. But India needs to have a significantly large stock of cruise missiles. And not just one type of missile, multiple types of missiles. India needs to get its act together. The nearby missile needs to be developed. Other variants need to be developed. And you need numbers. Quantity has a quality of its own. You need thousands of missiles in your, in your stock. You need to have a stock of thousands of missiles, not just a couple of hundred missiles. That's not, that is simply not enough. You need enormous amounts of arms and ammunition in reserve, enough to last you several months, not, enough, not just for two weeks. You need enormous stocks of ammunition, bullets, shells, artillery shells. You need large number of artillery guns, right? We, we are still depending on the 1980s Beaufort guns, as far as I know. We need more. We need lots and lots of those howitzers so, and, and other artillery um, weapons. So the lessons of the Russian war are very clear. You need numbers. Quantity is very important. And then you need to invest in something like the multiple MLRS rocket system. Right? Uh, let me show you what that looks like. What, what does that look like? What is MLRS? This is what MLRS looks like. So this is... These are various MLRS systems. You need to be able to fire enormous salvos of these rockets, multiple launch rocket system, MLRS. India has its own Pinaka system. We need large numbers of these because these are extremely, extremely useful, extremely handy. This is when you, when you launch enormous numbers of rockets in one go in, in salvos. That is, is a game changer when it comes to artillery warfare and, you know, uh, any kind of war. You also need drones. Drones have been a game changer in this war. Not just for uh, reconnaissance and detection purposes, but also for firing missiles from the sky undetected. You need various kinds of drones. Drones that can loiter for hours and observe with, with high precision what's happening on the ground without being detected. And also drones that can fire missiles on, on ground targets or that can pinpoint the location of moving ground targets so that they can be fired upon using MLRS or various other uh, weapons. You need these things. You need uh, kamikaze drones, suicide drones, drones that will destroy themselves and destroy the target. You need all of this. This is the 21st century. You cannot go into warfare with a 20th century mindset. So these are some of the lessons India needs to learn urgently from the Ukraine conflict. 